of Sioux Lane Republican Women, and I welcome you here tonight. We'd like to start first with our invocation. Lisa Marie Johnson is going to be um, sharing our prayer, and as she does, she has a, a wonderful prayer pre prepared, but I'd also like all of you to please keep in your mind this evening Helen Boyer. Helen has been a, a lifelong contributor to the success of Republican parties, and uh, she's a tremendous woman, and I, I personally can't believe she's gone. So, um, and I would encourage you, if you missed the interview that we had with her, it's on Facebook. It's, um, I believe, Lisa Marie, can we get it through our website also? Uh, so you'll be able to watch that. And I'm so thankful that we had that opportunity to have that conversation and record it for everybody because uh, she has a lot of wonderful things to share. So please keep Mrs. Boyer in your, in your thoughts and in your prayers this evening. And with that, Lisa Marie Johnson, would you please come up front? Okay, if we may, please just bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we pray for your blessing on all of our elected officials. We pray for the president that he may conduct the affairs of national government with wisdom, bravery, and true justice. We pray for the members of Congress that they may truly represent the needs of the people and work in harmony for the advancement of all men, women, and children. We pray for the judges that rule the courts of our land, that they may balance justice with mercy and civil law with divine mandate. Grant all of our national, state, and local leaders with the gifts of wisdom, justice, counsel, and fortitude, that they may conduct the affairs of man in accord with the will of God. And we ask for a very special blessing in your protection upon our governor, Dennis Dugard, the First Lady Linda Dugard and their dear family. Grant to all men the gift of respect for lawful authority, justly exercised, that we may live as a united people, one nation under God. And we ask this in your name, Father. Amen. Amen. All right. And with that, I'd like to ask you all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. I've had the privilege of spending a lot of time with Morgan Macau over the past several months. Lots of conversations, um, wonderful conversations, and it's very exciting that together we're pulling our two groups of women together to spend some time tonight. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to shift our schedule a little bit tonight because we want to honor Mrs. Dugard's schedule. She and uh, Dennis will be driving back probably not flying, but driving back to here this evening. So we want to give, them the, give her the opportunity to speak first. So Lauren, I'd like to ask you to come up front and introduce yourself and Mrs. Duker. <coughs> what a privilege and honor to introduce that first lady. And as uh, Anne said, she is in kind of a hurry to get, get to Pierre, apparently. <laughs> So I know we'd like to visit with her, but just kind of honor her request and let her leave when she's still without stopping her too often. Now I've got um, a bunch of did you knows, and you probably do know some of these things, but that's the way it is. Did you know that Linda grew up in Del Rapids? I knew that. She was a third of 12 children in the Schmidt family. Today, eight of those 12 still live in Del Rapids or in Sioux Falls. Linda graduated from Del Rapids St. Mary High School in 71. Linda attended South Dakota State University, which she, where she obtained her degree in physical education and teaching, a teaching certificate. After graduation, Linda returned to Del Rapids, where she taught at St. Mary's and coached the school's first girls basketball team. She then worked for several years in the university student life, first at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, and then at University of California, Davis, Davis, California, and a great educator and librarian. I know she will make a great first lady as well. And so she is, Linda. decided to do, and I remember talking to a few of you in, gosh, was it December already? 
Yes, because we were around a Christmas tree. They said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I had many people knocking on my door saying, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And one of the um, first meetings that we had with other first ladies from around the United States is they said, um, take a few months and decide what you're passionate about and then do those things. <clears throat> one of the first things I knew I was going to do, I kind of fell into that, is in March for um, Dr. Seuss's birthday, which is, does anyone know? March 2nd. March 2nd is Dr. Seuss's birthday. And uh, most schools and libraries have a big celebration that day. And so one of the peer schools called up and said, say, can you come and read to our students? And I said, sure. But Dennis had got invited before me. So <laughs> anyway, I said, how about if I just come with Dennis and I'll let him read? And so um, I did that in Fort Pier. But little did he know that I had three more speaking engagements that day for Dr. Seuss's birthday. So then I went to the other three by myself. And being a librarian, we always celebrated Dr. Seuss's birthdays with his um, green eggs and ham we would have in the library. We'd have cookies, we'd wear hats, costumes, whatever. So anyway, um, I went to that in March. And then I thought, you know, this is what I really love to do. I love to promote reading and read to kids. But I knew in working in the library that when kids get to be third, fourth, fifth, sixth graders, they don't read as much. And the, the, those years are when they're deciding whether it's cool to read or not. And they need to have the right information in their hands. So anyway, I thought, that's one thing I know I'm going to promote. So I started in April and May until school was out, um, traveling to different schools in South Dakota and reading to third, fourth, and fifth graders and talking about some of their distractions and how they needed to just continue reading. So that's been a fun program. And the last time I'd been to Coleman Egan, Egan had an elementary and Coleman had an elementary, but now they're one. So um, I walked in and Bonnie Hammer was there, one of the gals I used to play softball with for years, and um, she greeted me at the door and she said, well, my son teaches here and he has something for you. And so he came in and he gave me a t-shirt and it said, Coleman Egan FFA. I said, well, thank you so much. And he said, you know what? He said, um, I was gonna give you a sweatshirt, but you know, our budget was cut 10%, so I'm giving you a t-shirt. <laughs> because third, fourth, and fifth graders usually read chapter books. Those are books that have several chapters in them. So then when I go to school, I bring them a box of books. Like today when I went to Coleman Egan, I brought them a box of books from Black Hawk, South Dakota. That was my last school. And then um, gave them those books. And now I'm going to take their books, the Coleman Egan books, to Canton, which I go to. The um, next thing that I was, I'm involved in is uh, Infant Mortality Task Force. When um, Dennis gave his State of the State speech, in there he said that um, in South Dakota, 79 babies are dying every year, and that that number has been going up the last 10 years. From 1990 to 2000, our numbers were going down through education and um, promoting safe sleep habits and things like that, and now our numbers are starting to go back up. In fact, in 2010, the number was 80 babies that died in South Dakota. So, that's one of the last, oh no, that isn't the last thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> the last thing. <laughs> so Dennis said, are you sure, Linda? I said, yep, this is my last one. <laughs> the last one is um, STEM. That stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Um, South Dakota needs 8,000 
healthcare workers by the time 2018 rolls around. Well, thank you again for having me here tonight. I wanted to save a little bit of time for questions, too. Um, it has been such an honor, though, to be First Lady. You know, going, kids are so darn honest when you go in there. You know, um, they'll say, you know, I thought your name was Michelle. She really already covered <coughs> membership. And while she's up here, Cal and Jane, I want to thank you for this lady. <laughs> well, I'm Beth Jameson, and we've been talking a while about um, a fundraiser for us that we can just go out and have fun and make some good money so that we can help candidates in future issues that we all agree on and believe in. And with that, we have the Chef Classic coming up. So it's actually a chef competition. And there you'll have appetizers that you will um, taste that the chefs will all be making. There'll be um, four to six chefs, so we're trying to finalize who the chefs are. And then it'll be wine and beer also. And so you'll go around, um, you'll drop a pebble in the judge that you like, or the chef that you like the best. And there's no gimmicks, absolutely none. We're not going to, you pay your ticket to come, it's $50. So that gets you food and beverage, uh, and nothing else. Just socialize with people that you enjoy being around, other Republicans. It's going to be at Overlook Cafe, which is becoming Utopia at, fall, at uh, the Falls. And so it's going to be beautiful. It'll be candlelight. It'll be wonderful. So it's cocktail attire. So women get your cute little dresses out, and then you'll have sports coats and ties that you can wear. So, uh, But it'll be a really fun event. Um, Grab your brothers, your sisters, your neighbors, your friends, and even if you're not on the same page, but you're both Republicans, bring them along. Whether you're coming to our meetings here, you're coming to the MLRW meetings, whether you're going to any of these other events, we need to pull together as Republicans. So that's really the last thought I want to leave with you tonight, is remember we're all part of one family. And, uh, and I want to encourage you to help us expand that family. Thank you for coming tonight. Enjoy your conversation and your dinner. And I look forward to you being at our upcoming events.